Bandura, 1962, the 23rd flying display and exhibition of the Society of British Aircraft Constructors. Largest aircraft on show, the BC-10, stands aloof. In contrast, the diminutive Beagle Wallace Autogyro is dwarfed by spectators. With its three turbine engines in repose, the Army Scout helicopter is parked with controls at the ready. For the many interested spectators, there's a close inspection of the Jet Provost trainer, as well as a wide range of other aircraft, such as the Vulcan V bomber. The Trident's low undercarriage attracts attention. In spite of the many applications of jet engines, propellers are still in fashion. The Beagle provides variations on a theme with the Argosy, a versatile freight carrier and passenger transport. The unique rear fuselage doors provide an open reception for curious visitors. From the static park, time now to explore the comforts of aircraft seating. The indoor exhibition, with 350 companies exhibiting, has a record total of 380 stands. Models of current aircraft and ancillary equipment form an interesting display. A sectioned model shows the interior of the hovercraft, which has now become a reality. And for the technician, a wide array of Britain's jet engines to scrutinise. With the accent on vertical takeoff and landing, the Pegasus shows its swivelling thrust nozzles. Wider horizons in engineering development and new shapes mark the advance in aircraft evolution. Opening the flying programme, the Navy demonstrates its faultless formations of sea vixens and scimitars. Flight refueling is now a routine manoeuvre for extending range and endurance. A perfect formation of scimitars executing the total roll. The Buccaneer, a low-level naval strike aircraft designed to operate below radar cover. The super-powered Vulcan is here a flying test bed for a fifth engine, the supersonic Olympus with reheat installed below the fuselage. Provosts of Central Flying School take off information to demonstrate their skill and aerobatic finesse.
Real Lightning demonstrates its high-G, low-radius turns at low altitude. most slender Dota, the Henley Page 115, investigates low-speed handling characteristics of a wing design suitable for supersonic airliners of the future. Another research aircraft, the supersonic T-188, constructed entirely of stainless steel for flight testing at speeds up to 2,000 miles per hour. The Avro 748 takes off on one engine. And now the helicopter team demonstrate their agility. And the team assemble for a follow me leader finale. A man with his head in the clouds and his hands on the Beagle Wallace autogyro controls. Demonstrating its stability, a descent with hands and feet off the controls. The P1127, powered by a vector plus turbofan engine, shows its faces with a neighbourly hunter and demonstrates its high rate of climb and manoeuvrability. Rotatable nozzles on the Pegasus power unit direct the six and a half ton thrust to the rear for forward flight and downwards for vertical lift. Gentle spot landing makes a fitting climax for this convincing demonstration of the VTOL fighter. Now a new look in civil transport aircraft, the Triton. With three spay bypass jet engines grouped at the rear, it's designed to carry 100 passengers on short trunk route stages up to 1,700 miles. Another new development is the DH-125 a small transport aircraft with twin rear-mounted jet engines.
With four rear-mounted Conway engines, the VC-10 will carry up to 150 passengers over intercontinental routes at a maximum cruising speed of 600 miles per hour. landing runs are made possible by the use of thrust reversers on all engines. Now the RAF's contribution, with Lightning to 74 Squadron turning on the reheat in a mass takeoff. Supersonic fighters weave a high-speed pattern in the Farnborough sky. And now, hunters of 92 Squadron add their skill and precision to a memorable display. flying and portless performance are synonymous with the Pandora display, demonstrating the vast potential of the aircraft industry.